When you think about all the problems that different communities suffer in the United States and Canada, the Building Trades has been engaged in helping to work with these communities and create pathways for decades. Now, we have over 75 apprenticeship readiness programs going across the United States and many, many more in Canada to create the opportunities for native peoples, for people of color, for veterans, for women, and create that pathway through apprenticeship readiness up into apprenticeship programs and ultimately to journeyman status. And after that, as we know in our industry, the sky's the limit. The Building Trades affiliates nationwide spend upwards of a billion dollars a year training apprentices. And that's paid for by the working guy on the job and the contractors in a partnership. We are very proud of working with the apprentice programs. We are very active in Walt Disney World as well as here in Anaheim at the Disneyland Resort. It brings high quality, diverse candidates. It brings people into the program with the opportunity to learn a trade, learn a skill, and then be able to put that into their professional life. The way we've structured this apprenticeship readiness programs and we've full partnered with communities and community groups, we're letting them be the gatekeepers to the apprenticeship readiness programs. They're helping us do the recruitment, they're helping us to make sure we have the right candidates in the apprenticeship readiness programs who have the prerequisite skill sets, the soft skills, to make them be as successful as they can and be. The City of St. Louis has a workforce uh, construction ordinance. And in that ordinance, uh, the city have stated that individuals who live, work, and play in this community should have an opportunity uh, to be a part of whatever economic and construction growth is going in the region. So diversity is very important. City residency is very important. Women, very important. And apprenticeships, getting new people in to get the skill so they can have a livelihood. 20% um, of the work done in the projects that went through our JPA uh, system are apprenticeship jobs. And 25% of those are from disadvantaged communities, so that is veterans, uh, that's communities of color, that's um, high poverty areas, people who have been in the criminal justice system. But we also make sure that we bring women into the trades because this isn't a man's only club anymore. When you become part of the community and it's a, a community-wide effort, the conversation becomes a lot easier because it's not just me asking, representing the unions, it's the community asking for these apprenticeship opportunities within the community. Years ago, we focused on the idea that we needed more community inclusion and what that was going to look like. So we worked under the idea that if we started our own pre-apprenticeship programs, that we could get people that were trained from the community to industry standards and then employ them through project labor agreements and community workforce agreements. The Building Pathways Pre-Apprenticeship Program, which was initiated in Boston by current mayor Martin Walsh, has been a great success. It's geared towards taking men uh, and women from the neighborhoods with a focus on women and minorities into our apprenticeship programs to meet our commitment to ensure we're servicing the entire community. Building Pathways was born from a project labor agreement uh, with the Boston Housing Authority and the Building Trades. It was uh, money that was sent down from President Obama and the federal government to retrofit housing developments with new uh, energy efficiency. Incorporated in that, there was language for a pre-apprentice program. I think the commitment from all the trades of bringing individuals into these programs, into the apprenticeship program, gives them not just a job, it gives them a career. It gives them something to look forward to. It gives them middle class. The Building Trades now, with their training program, fills a void that our education system doesn't currently provide. I don't think there's a truer representation of America than if you go to a Building Trades training institute these days. Across this country, we want to make sure that we're doing it in every metropolitan area, where we're working with communities of color, women and veterans, coalitions of people that are interested in creating the ladders of opportunities to move people from the low-wage, unskilled jobs into the middle class through pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship. Before I became an apprentice, I was homeless out on the streets. Uh, I was drug dealing. I was also using drugs and um, was, was, really wasn't doing anything with myself. Before I got in with the IBEW, I was working menial jobs here and there. I have a son to support, so it was hard for me to uh, try to make a life for myself with making $8 an hour. 
If I hadn't synced up with the hard hats, to be honest, I don't even want to think of what I could be doing. There's just so many stories of veterans out on the streets working odd-end jobs. I honestly think this was the best decision I ever made in my life, and because of it, I'm able to have a better future for myself and for my family. Yeah.